Hi, good evening. Um, this is Lorenzo. Uh, today's date is July the 12th, 2009, 1.34 a.m. Yes, I'm actually awake this late. <laughs> I'm here to... Um, um, this video is basically going to be presented to uh, talk about fish oil and omega-3 fatty acids, uh, which, is which is affiliated with uh, fish oil. And uh, I'm here to answer a particular question that a person asked me basically the correlation of fish oil and depression. Well, before I do that, I'm going to tell you guys um, about the actions of, uh, of fish and omega-3 fatty acids and its, um, its uh, recommendation levels for population and uh, its effects on the on hyperlipidemic states as well as for cardiovascular diseases, okay? So because remember that omega-3 fatty acids will um, benefit the heart of healthy people and those at high and also those of high risk um, of cardiovascular diseases. So, we recommend fish and eating fish, particularly fatty fish, at least two times a week. Because the reason for this is um, fish or fish oil is a good source of protein and does not have high saturated fat that fatty fat that are seen in uh, fatty meat products do. So, fatty fish is like a mackerel um, or lake trout, herring, sardines, um, albacore tuna and salmon are two high kinds of, um, they have uh, two kinds of omega-3 fatty acids. They have eicosapentaenoic acid, EPA, and uh, doco, docosahexaenoic acid, DHA. And uh, basically, we recommend eating tofu and also other types of soybeans and canola, walnut, um, walnut and flax seeds and other oils that are involved with these because they contain alpha-linolic acid, LNA, which can uh, become omega-3 fatty acids in the body. And the extent of this modification uh, is modest um, and controversial. However, studies have seen and observed that uh, they do have an effect on the uh, cardiovascular system. Okay, So the recommendation levels that we have and are to provide here is that for patients without, docu uh, uh, without documented coronary heart disease, or CHD, the recommendation is to eat a variety of um, fish, or just take intake of fatty uh, fish oil at least twice a week to include oils and foods that are rich in alpha linolenic acid. For patients with documented um, chronic heart disease, we are recommending them to consume at least one gram of um, EPA uh, and DHA per day, preferably from fatty fish or just an intake of fish oil. Um, and for patients uh, who need to lower triglyceride levels, we recommend we recommend about two to four grams of EPA and DHA per uh, per day, provided as capsules or under physicians, uh, physician's care. So basically, I'm going to give you guys the background. Okay, in 2002, the American Health American Heart Association released a scientific statement: "Quote, fish consumption, fish oil, omega-3 fatty acids, and cardiovascular disease on the effects of omega-3 fatty acids on heart function." including antiarrhythmic effects, hemodynamics, uh, which is basically cardiac mecha mechanics, and arterial endothelial function. The link between omega-3 fatty acids and the uh, cardiovascular disease risk reduction are still being studied, but research has shown that omega-3 fatty acids have four uh, observations. The first observation is that it, uh, we observe decreased risk of arrhythmias, which can lead to sudden cardiac death, right? So we can decrease, decrease the risk of arrhythmia. It's positive. We can also, we observe that uh, there's a decrease uh, triglyceride levels, right? Triglyceride, uh, we don't want to have high triglyceride levels uh, because triglyceride levels are, indicates um, hyperlipidemic states. So we want to decrease triglycerides. And, you want to, and also it decreases the growth rate of atherosclerotic plaque. We understand that atherosclerotic plaque is basically, or atherosclerosis is basically just fiber fatty plaque that is uh, basically clot formation in any of your um, arterial, uh, arterial regions. Uh, it can be in the venous or even in the arterial venules or our arterioles or even in large arteries or, or veins. Basically what happens is that uh, due to the formation of atherosclerotic plaque, this will lead to the reduction of blood flow, oxygenated blood flow or deoxygenated blood flow. Uh, this, will, uh, this will lead to uh, an increase in oxygen demand to the heart, uh, therefore causing cardiomyopathy. And uh, if the atherosclerotic plaque or atherosclerosis actually increases too much and actually impedes blood flow, it can cause necrosis uh, of a particular viscera.
and if, it, if this particular viscera is, is the heart, particularly uh, correlating to the coronary, coronary arteries, this can lead to what is called a myocardial infarct, or basically um, a necrosis of the heart muscle, or a heart, the cardiac muscles. And uh, if, if, it's, if it is uh, substantial, uh, can um, preclude the patient to, to death. So basically, um, what do epidemiological and observational studies show? It shows that uh, clinical trials have shown that omega-3 fatty acids, they do reduce, reduce cardiovascular incidence, and large-scale epidemiologic studies suggest that people at risk of for coronary heart disease do benefit from consuming omega-3 fatty acids from plants and marine sources, or just even taking the, the pill form. The ideal amount taken isn't clear yet, however, evidence from prospective secondary prevention studies, they do suggest that taking um, EPA or DHA ranging from 0.5 to 1.8 grams per day um, significantly reduces the deaths from heart disease and all causes. For alpha linoleic acid, a total intake of 1.5 to 3 grams per day seems beneficial. And randomized clinical trials have shown that omega-3 fatty acid supplements can reduce cardiovascular events, death, non-fatal heart attacks, or non-fatal strokes. And these can also slow the progression of atherosclerosis in coronary patients. However, more studies are needed to confirm this, but uh, that's basically generalized. Increasing amount of omega-3 fatty acid intake through the foods is preferable, remember that. However, coronary artery disease patients may not be able to get enough omega-3 diet alone. Therefore, if a patient is suffering from uh, coronary heart disease, uh, CH or, or you know, uh, chronic heart disease, what happens is basically the patient um, has an increased in preload, right? The patient has increased preload and increased in afterload. Due to the increase in uh, preload afterload, this increases the oxygen demand in the heart. So basically what the, the, what happens in the heart is that it causes the heart to increase in size. This is known as cardiomyopathy, all right? So what we can do by treating the patient, we can give the patient um, an adjunct treatment, basically, is give them fish oil. Fish oil is just basically uh, a nutritional supplement. It's not the, the major drug of choice. What we would do if a patient is having atherosclerotic plaque growth or you know, a CH, CHD, we would give the patient one ACE inhibitors to reduce the uh, preload. Uh, basically, it filtrates that. Um, when you give ACE inhibitors to reduce the preload, it also reduces the afterload. We would then also give the patient uh, digoxin, which is basically a car oh, which is a uh, cardiac glycoside. It increases the contractility of the heart. It, what basically what happens is that it increases the force of contraction, and when you increase the force of contraction, you reduce the uh, the rapidity of the heart, but you increase the amount of blood that is uh, that is pumped out therefore it decreases the oxygen the oxygen demand in the heart it decreases this strain and the burden on the heart and as a result it, it uh, reverses the cardiomyopathy, cardiomyopathic process and um, can help save the patient's life of course uh, at the same time you can also give the patient vasodilators to basically to um, flush out this uh, extra extracellular fluid and reduce the strain on the afterload as well. So that's what we do. This is the main thing. If a patient has CHD, we treat them with ACE inhibitors, we get to treat them with cardioglycosides, we also give them digoxin, we give them, that, uh, we can also give them, um, uh, what's it called, uh, yeah, uh, vasodilators, etc. But do note that uh, constant intake of, um, constant intake of uh, fish oil, it does help in hyperlipidemic states. It's a, it's a nutritional supplement. Now to answer the specific question regarding fish oil and antidepressants. Um, basically, we have to keep in mind that fish oil uh, actually affects the uh, serotonin levels um, uh, in patients. So now, like when we ask ourselves, what actually is depression? Like, what causes depression? So I'll answer that in the next one. Uh, I'll answer that in the next... Uh, slideshow. <laughs> uh, join me again for the next time, okay? Thank you very much. You have a nice day. Bye. Oh yeah, by the way, this is for um, my friend Ethelyn. Ethelyn is a pharmacist and uh, she's a smart lady and she asked me this awesome question. So this is for her. Ethelyn, uh, I'll make you another, uh, I'm going to answer your question specifically in the next one, okay? Um, enjoy. Thanks for listening.